and we're recording. So I will be back very shortly. So for me, sampling is one way to find new music. And actually reason to find new music. So I can find new samples, but one day it becomes too hard for me. For example, I, I wanted to find bass. I want to find drums, but I I don't I don't know where to find, when to, where to search for that parts. And there is so so much hate about uh, e digging. There is crate digging, where you search vinyl music. And since I can can't afford the vinyl music. And actually, actually, not so much record stores in Kazakhstan. So only way is e digging. That's just basically e searching for things. What? And that's basically searching uh, for things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's the internet. That's where we're at in 2020. It's not like any of us can go to a record store anyway right now. What? True hip hop producers, I are hate uh, easy game or all kind of electronic music or uh, modern technologies. That feels like a weird way to be elitist, but I'm not surprised to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever checked out a uh, CC Mixter, Victor? What? Uh, I'll I'll drop a link in the. Uh in the chat ccmixter.org um they have like a bunch of um uh, they call them pails for acapellas but um all sorts of like stems basically um of various things and um if you release stuff on cc mixter it's kind of weird because you can't pick any you, you can't pick certain licenses like you can't pick any of the share alike licenses um Cause, cause their thing is like, well, uh, we're called CC Mixter. Like people are going to remix and reuse the stuff. So we don't, we don't want to put the, the share alike license on there. Uh, so I think the two licenses are attribution or attribution non-commercial. Um, and so, I mean, if you pick the attribution non-commercial thing, then you could use it as um, BY and CSA, which that's the, the standard license that we use on Explain um, that to us, Doug, for people I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, so um, the in the Creative Commons suite, um, actually, I, my my uh, the recording uh, you Ben have access to the to the talk I gave to Open Logic about <laughs> about all of this. Um, if you're if you want to hear more, but um, I think that I don't have any other. I don't think I have any public recordings. But um, give us so, like the Cliff Notes version of yeah. what you're talking about. So um, I think there's six Creative Commons licenses that can be arranged um, out of the Creative Commons suite. So there's what's called BY, uh, which is attribution. And so that comes from the, um, the English word, you know, like this is by, and then the author name. Um, all the others, the letters are part of the word. So non-commercial is in C, share like is SA and no derivatives is ND. And you can mash those up um, into various things. So like what I was saying with um, CC Mixter is they do the BY, which is attribution, which means um, you can use this for any purpose as long as you give the original author attribution. And then they allow BY-NC, which is you can use this for any purpose that you like as long as you give it uh, the original author attribution and you don't use it for commercial purposes. So if you were to use it in like a school play or um, Got it. yeah, so any basically anything where you're not making money and that can be a little dicey because it's like, well, if you're a nonprofit, but then you're charging admission. Um, I mean, people have different takes on, uh, I mean, legally speaking, like there's not like, it's pretty well defined, but like, um, in practice, like people get kind of confused about what these, um, what these non-commercial things are. Um, usually when an artist is putting a non-commercial tag on it, 
they're just, they basically want you to ask them before you use it commercially. And often, okay. you, you know, they'll be like, ask oh yeah. Like, we want you to pay us or ask Well, it, like... it depends. So it might be like, hey, we have a school play, we're charging admission, is that okay? And they might say yes. Um, so uh, I think a lot of times, if people really just don't want you touching their stuff, they're probably gonna put a no derivatives tag on it. So anytime somebody doesn't have that dash D ND on it, um, that's a signal that they're, um, that they're interested in people reusing it and remaking it. And so even if like, you know, strictly speaking, what you're doing is not part of that. The thing about being the original author um, is that you have the right to give additional licenses. So, you know, they, they can basically waive, um, you know, you see this in open source projects, you know, there'll be licensed under like an MIT license and under a GPL license and nobody else can do that except the original author and they can be like, whatever, you know, and you see this too in, um, like the open core sort of model, they'll be like, well, I'm giving these people a proprietary license and these people, you know, I mean, the open core can mean a lot of different things. And I know some of you probably don't know what I'm saying, but I think Ben probably knows enough about those words to, and since he asked the question, um, that was sort of where I was going. But if anybody wants me to like explain what any of those words are, um, I'm happy to, to dive a little deeper in, into all of that. But do, um, do you need to re re register your, your rights or license? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, mean, I guess that's my question too. Like you just say, Hey, this is this now. And that's good. Like you're all locked in. You just, that's my thing. Or can you change it? Or like, I mean, so how do you assert, do you assert this license? Yeah. So you can go one direction, but not the other. So what you can't do is give something as an attribution license. I would assume and, you can't circle back and make things more restrictive after right. the fact. Exactly. So if you start with the most restrictive Creative Commons license, well, you I guess the, 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 ma the main thing, I, mean, I guess that if you just start with all rights reserved, you know, that's, that's the most restrictive, then you can later go back and say, oh, yeah, you know, I actually, you know, I don't care if people share this or I don't care if people remix this. Um, but yeah, once, you know, once the genie's out of the bottle, you can't shove it back in. Um, and um, so I, I, I guess if anybody was, if any musicians were, I mean, like Victor is already releasing his stuff under Creative Commons. Uh, but if there were any musicians that were thinking about doing that, I would say just, um, you know, practice caution, start with the most restrictive. And, you know, if that works out, you can, you can keep decreasing um, the letters on the end, basically. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, um, there's probably other sites that do the sort sort of thing that CC Mixer does, um, but you know, as far as like um, collaboration, um, and that's that's really these days what they really they're really focused on is collaboration. Like mix is in the name, so people think remix, but like um, they really sort of want to get away from that. I mean, one thing that you can do for sure with the well with any of the things other than no derivatives with the creative commons licenses is do covers and you can do covers anyway with you know standard copyright but you have to pay royalties but um well at least in the u.s um and that's a that's a whole you know the rights around that and what you can and can't do is probably a topic for another day although i mean i guess i guess it kind of does play in into the, the sampling a little bit you know um, cause like if you wanted to, to like copy a beat or something like that, like, um, I mean, I guess anytime you weren't using the whole track, um, then it would be, me, it'd be a non cover, I guess. For me, it was a big, a big, oh my God. A big what? For me, was big. Nonsense uh, that you, if you want to use sample, you need to clear it. So you need to pay or talk with original after. Yeah, the, the sampling, like, you know, kind of gets the, uh, you know, it's, um, 
I guess, you know, again, in the U.S. and probably in a lot of places, um, seen as like a lesser <laughs> art than, um, than, you know, a performance. I mean, that's, that's where the ability to cover comes from is because, because originally it was the songwriter that had all the rights, you know? And so like, this used to be a big thing, you know, like you write a song and then a bunch of people do the song. And like, there was, I think the, the songwriting was less tied to the performer. Um, I mean, certainly back, you know, way back before people, you know, before so you're talking like a Cole stuff. Porter kind of thing. Yeah, or maybe even further back than that, really. Right. Um, you know, like before radio, before any, you know, before phonographs, you know, what, what, what did, what happened? People wrote a song and then you bought the, you know, the sheet music for it. And then people performed it. Like whoever was the piano player at the bar, whoever the orchestra was, like they played it. You know, there was no, no tie between the original composer and the performer like those are just completely separate and though you know in popular music um even though that's the, you know you do still have like songwriters that don't perform for sure i mean in a lot of like top 40 type of stuff that's the way it happens but people tend to think of like this is their song you know like even like a britney spears who doesn't necessarily write all of her material um people associate the original performance with britney not with the songwriter um it's just but our, i don't know that our our legal system really yeah, but I think you had that. a period of recorded music where there were like songwriters and performers and they were kind of separate things. And then you had like a very extended period where like the songwriters and performers were the same. Like when I think of classic rock, like that kind of starts yeah. that era where like the songwriter and the performer are generally the same person. Right. But then like now it's kind of swung back to where there's like a team of songwriters and they just write songs for everybody. See, I, I, I don't know that that ever really changed. I mean, I think with like, well, like with like I think disco, there was a big moment where having your own material was, you know, basically your way to have artistic credibility, but I don't, nobody gives a shit about that now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that was true in rock music, but you know, like if you think about like a Carol King or like, right. I don't know. Well, and like Motown was never that way, but right. I don't think many people would say Motown's not authentic. Right. So I, I yeah, I, th I, I think there's just two strands that sort of have happened in popular music. And um, that pendulum, you know, maybe has swung a little bit one way or, uh, you know, I mean, I think time, I think the, the strand of writing your own music for the sake of authenticity is not the predominant strand at this point in time. I, I would agree with like, um, certainly with like popular top, music. In general. Yeah, with like top 40 type. Right. Um, yeah, but there popular. was a time when it was, and fair it's enough. not that long ago. Yeah, that's fair. I was confused when I found out that um, many of pop popular rap artists or hip hop artists are don't even make their own music. You mean they don't make the beats, or they don't? Yeah. Write the, the lyrics. No beats, no lyrics. Yeah, yeah. So what what the point of hip hop when you don't make in beats? I feel like at one point there were a lot of hip hop groups and then like maybe 20 years ago, there sort of stopped being groups and like the producer was part of the group. Right. So the, yeah. most of the beats came from the same producer and now hip hop artists are all like solo artists and the beats just come from wherever. And sometimes it's the MC and sometimes it's some producer they hire. Yeah. And you do still see, I think, um, you know, a lot of MCs like um, not necessarily like claiming it as there, you know, it'd be like MC, I'm the dude featuring, and then it'll be like, you know, featuring the producer basically. So, right. I mean, I think, I mean, there's an element of that. Um, but I think what, what you're saying, Victor, is that like, you know, they're sort of, in some cases, people are passing it off as their own material when they, they didn't write the beats or you know make the beats or anything like that right that's what you're saying yeah yeah i mean it's a uh, it's kind of the same sort of thing as the songwriter situation where you know the songwriter is just kind of this background person that you know i can't beth you're being quiet got anything to say 
No, I'm sleepy. Sorry, I just I just did a big old workout, so I'm waking up a little bit. I'll I'll, I'll get in in a minute. I promise. She's getting there. This like sampling ultimately boils down to a discussion of copyright, and that is going to vary so much country to country that it's sort of a hard thing to talk about. No, I mean, maybe in like the very fine details, but pretty much everybody is um, is a member of the WTO at this point um, and uh, the World Trade Organization. And the World Trade Organization, um, part of membership is incorporating the big parts of the Berne Convention. Um, yeah, but I would think uh, the enforcement of that is pretty uneven between countries. Like, I can't imagine there's, a, and maybe I'm wrong, but there's a ton of copyright enforcement in Kazakhstan. Like, if you violate somebody's copyright, Victor, what's the worst thing that's going to happen to you? And that's the case. There's no copyright in Kazakhstan. Right, see? So, sure, they're probably part of the WTO, but it doesn't matter. I bet so, it matters. So, so it's China, and you can't tell me that's a place with strong copyright protections. Well, I do know that, like, um, in China, they've, like, you know, started to be more, like, they're, they're, people will, like, ask for permission and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're, like... Millions with your music, nobody's care about you. Yeah, I mean, you have to be, have to have a large enough, um, be a large enough entity for an international lawsuit. I mean... That's what it boils down to. But that's true, you know, in Spain or Italy or that's true everywhere. I mean, you know, if uh, if they're not, if you're not going to enforce it, then it is what it is. There are a few places that aren't members of the WTO, um, but uh, it's going to, they're all like little tiny places like the, you know, like Pacific Islands and stuff. When I made my first EPs, I was so scared if I will go to jail because of using samples. You're still with us though. Must have turned out okay. No, it's okay. He's I learned... talking from prison. <laughs> <laughs> No, as I, as I said, if you're not making million, millions with your music, nobody's care about you. Probably some truth to that. Do you ever worry about selling on iTunes or anywhere else, though, if somebody claims infringement? No. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one thing, is you could just get, like, removed from places. Um, so my music music is for five years already on iTunes or Spotify. There's and nobody's no complained. No. I always wonder if there's going to be some kind of AI that's going to go back and like find all these things and then pick out people to sue. That would be it my was, biggest worry. It was strange with uh, SoundCloud when my distributor put my music on SoundCloud and I am my music on SoundCloud and my music was deleted because of copyright restriction. Hmm. Yeah, it's a process of automating that that worries me. Yeah, the YouTube content ID stuff has flagged. I wish uh, Tom was on here, um, Tom Ray, because I know like he used to leave, uh, he's the lead singer of Lorenzo's music and also um, rom com. Um, and, uh, he used to leave his YouTube open, but, uh, because of like the content ID stuff got so weird, um, he had to, he had to claim it. Um, and, uh, you know, now, you know, like he's got it under a creative commons license, but, you know, as far as YouTube is concerned, it's not, um, the pr part of the problem with YouTube is that they only have one creative commons license that you can like select you know it's like the use standard youtube license or the ccby the attribution license and they mm -hmm. don't and uh lorenzo's music doesn't use that license so like you know it appears to everybody as if it's like full copyright um but um 
So it's kind of annoying in that respect. There is a problem with distributor. So you can't choose your license. It's all always all rights resolved. Yeah, one one RPM um, is what um, what Tom used to use, and they used to be able to do Creative Commons. I don't know if that's still the case. Um, you know, it may have gotten too complicated, or the YouTube situation may be untenable. I'm not real sure, but um, but I know back in the day that that was an option. Um, but I tried yeah. to use one one RPM. Uh, yeah to load my single but they said oh your cover is wrong dimension <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <Fuck you. laughs> yeah i think that like there was a guy and this was a long time ago at rpm that was like who got it and they may have gotten big enough to where like you know they weren't able to to replicate his knowledge throughout their team and so I, I don't know all the details again i wish i wish tom was here to to um talk about a bit about it but um yeah i mean i know he really liked one rpm for a while and he might still use them with the limitations that they have but well um was that you ben that dropped the negative land and yeah it was it uh, was what's because the that's, uh, that's what i think of when i think of sampling and copyright oh yeah 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 they had the the U2 and the the Casey Kasem. Right. Yeah. They have a 2020 Negative Land tour from the tours that never happened. <laughs> My life in the woods has been Yeah, oh, yeah I don't even know how to explain negative land, really. Is there a thing? I think they're more enjoyable as a concept than as music, but I don't <laughs> know what they're doing. Yeah, there's a certain amount of uh, performance art to, to negative land. Greg, what's up? Yes, sir. I can saw you there a second ago. Yeah, we can hear you. I, I saw I you muted there. though. What was yeah. that? Sweet. So you know that uh sampling is what we're we're talking about today. I think you probably yeah, have yeah. what yeah, uh came in. So uh what do you had to say about sampling? <laughs> it's just expensive for no reason, honestly. It's just it's hard to even try to clear samples. I've had yeah. a couple of people try and do that themselves and it you have to have a budget just to talk. Yeah. To these people and, and it's just if it was easy and affordable, I bet everyone would do it. I would. But right now in this in an in an environment where we're just oversaturated with music and it's just hard to even try to make a profit off of it, it makes no sense to even try and do it if you're not gonna make hundreds of thousands of copies and actually make a, a profit back. It's just a you mean it, it doesn't make any sense to, to go through the, uh, the clearance. And they make it hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really do. Have you, have you tried to use stuff like off of CC Mixter or any other Creative Commons stuff or? Um, yes and no. I've actually been using a lot of um, sample magic. Okay. What's uh, sample so magic? Uh, it's um, kind of like Splice. It's just a, a site full of um, commercial free music that you can use. Oh, uh, yeah. Play anything. Um, my last album I just put out on Black Sonic, um, Fox Lunch, but the majority of that album comes from Sample Magic. Sweet. Uh, and you saying that made me think there's also Free Sound. Um, I think Free Sound is probably more like, um, more, well, okay, I say this, I'll, you know, with, mostly ignorance about what's actually on free sound but i think it's more geared towards um like movies and sound samples and stuff um mm -hmm. but uh have you ever looked on free sound for stuff yeah i might i honestly i don't remember <laughs> i've gone i've gone all over this place looking for samples and shit I yeah can't remember half you, the places. 
you said you had Victor. Uh, what was the, uh, did you find good stuff there? Or? Actually, when, when you need some strange sound, you can find there. Yeah, but it's like people like, here's, you know, a commode shutting and here's people walking on the street and stuff like that, yeah. right? That, you know, or like, here's a fork hitting a plate. It's stuff like that, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, folio I, effect? Yeah, a lot of folio yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Mm. Some of my, my old albums were Cry of Children. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some people on Bandcamp too that like do, I don't know what the licenses on that stuff is, but um, the, the, they do some, um, the, well, there, there are definitely beats on Bandcamp and stuff too, but like, uh, um, you know, lots of like field recording and stuff. Um, I've actually stuff, seen a few. Yeah, there's um, there's one guy in particular um, that you know he has like it's not some random dude. Like I, you know, like he knows what he's doing and he has like all the like, you know, this is the like, um, you know, the frequency that it was recorded at and like. Um, but uh, I've listened to some of the stuff, but I can't remember what uh what his name is i'm gonna try to see if i can find it real quick um but uh my um oh man i um there is one guy from belarus catch the crackle he's making a few recordings nice i um might have shared this with Ben, but it's been a while. And even if I did, he may have um, forgotten it, but I'm going to drop a link to, um, it's a field recording um, that Aaron Wolf um, did. So also Wolf Tune is sort of his online handle. Um, people, people may have run into, but he, he's like a, you know, a professional musician. He does um, various different you know, like t teaches and stuff. Um, but he made a recording. He just like heard this, you know, he's not like a field recording person, but he heard this, um, it was raining one time and the storm drain was making this really cool um, beat. And um, he, uh, he sent it to me. But yeah, I don't know if he put, what license he put this under, in, in, you know, or if he did. He normally releases under um, pretty permissive license. But um but I just dropped that that link in there, and people can. Um, but yeah, it's like pretty intense. The um, the beat that um, the rain. I mean, it's like it's so rhythmic that you 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 want to believe that it's like false. But you know, I know that I know that it's not. I know that he just like. I mean, it's just crazy. Let's see what um, what uh, he's got. He's got nine hundred and forty three subscribers on YouTube. So that I mean, you know, like. It gives you some idea of, I mean, he's not like super famous, but he's also just like not some random dude. Um, what? I bet he released this under CCBY, but I don't. Oh yeah, so he he released it under CCBYSA. That's the attribution share. Like, um, it's basically the GPL of Creative Commons. It's a uh, it's not as strong a copy left as the GPL, but for people that care about that sort of thing, but it is, it's the closest thing that Creative Commons has. But, um, but yeah, you can't actually select that on YouTube. So you just have to like put it in the text, which is kind of annoying, but yeah. So if you guys wanted to, uh, well, I guess you couldn't use it for a block Sonic release without um, talking to Aaron since we use the, the non-commercial um tag which wouldn't apply but um what will, would be with you know, when so oh, not not when if someone break the license if um so if somebody took the uh the ccbysa and uh then aaron decided to sue them what would happen is that what you're saying or uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um maybe <laughs> yeah i mean aaron probably wouldn't um but um 
and almost certainly if you asked um he would say sure you can do that um but uh he does he would probably you know want you to release it under cc bysa and actually um if you ever wanted to do that uh, i know that um mike has the the option of changing the license on the website he used to not have a framework where that was an easy thing to do um and uh but now now it's pretty easy for him to change the license so um he could actually do that but um but yeah i don't know um i mean ultimately like it's just a copyright violation like any other copyright violation you know um if you you know so it's just it's no different than like sampling prints or so it's only as good as your ability to sue somebody yeah, yeah yeah i mean essentially um but um i mean you could also do like dmc takedown notices and stuff if you really just didn't want it to exist you know um you could do that and um you know on any sort of like provider like a soundcloud or a Bandcamp, then that would get taken down i mean if you're hosting your own website then um i don't think the isps are probably set up you know for that um quite as well as like the youtubes and such um but i could be wrong about that um yeah you can get stuff taken down what was that you can get stuff taken down i've done it well, also, of, um, of, um, SoundCloud. Yeah, but I'm saying like <laughs> places like SoundCloud, they have a process for that kind of stuff. But like yeah. if, if it's just somebody hosting their own website and you have to go to like Verizon or GoDaddy or something like that, I think that would be a little bit harder. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know that I, for I sure. But so. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I start talking about metadata. And that can, you know, that goes somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, like, the D the DMCA would, you know, still applies to GoDaddy and Verizon and stuff, but, like, the process is just not going to be as streamlined as it is on the right. YouTube and stuff. And so uh, I think it's pretty easy to get stuff taken down from places like SoundCloud. But, um, you know, I mean, and at some point, it's like, you're not going to get it off the pirate bay, you know? <laughs> it's like, right, um, right. so it's like, uh it's once it's out there it's out there it's kind of the way it is um i noticed too um that archive.org doesn't have a very obvious way to report um <laughs> things um which uh you know i i'm not real sure why um i would think that i know a lot of people sort of like i mean i like archive.org is like a 501c3 in the US, which I don't know how that applies. It's, it's a nonprofit, you know, um, you know, I think it's a charitable organization or something in the UK. I'm not real sure, but, um, but I would, you know, but people still do accuse them of like being a piracy website and stuff. And yeah. I would think if they wanted to help legitimize themselves that they should make that, they should at least have like a form it was pretty easy to find to say, you know, if there's something that shouldn't be here, report it. Um, but I, I wasn't able to find, um, find that anywhere. So, um, you know, maybe they just feel like people would be, you know, sending them too many notices if they made it easy, but um, it is what it is. I think like I guess that whole like argument about archive.org sort of like flared up again when everybody started like working from home and schools were closed and people were finding stuff on archive.org. Um but I hopefully they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So um one thing um uh, we haven't really talked about is like using samples and incorporating samples we sort of talked about finding them um but uh you know like in manipulating samples so i don't know if victor greg one of you guys want to talk a little bit about you know that side of things yeah 
uh, in first I was using samples as a whole piece of somebody's music. I don't I don't know I didn't know about flip the sample or somehow to change. But then I found that replay with instruments that sample is much more easy easiest way to get the sound. So I'm, I'm not doing samples anymore. I still sample to this day. That's how I learned how to make music. It's pretty much fun just matching up samples and you know just putting stuff together. Um, more recently, I just play stuff myself, or I go to Sample Magic or Loop Masters or something like that. Um, I don't know. I do it all. It doesn't really. I don't really put too much on it really anymore. I don't know. Do you guys ever sample yourself? Yes. Yeah. I More now than ever. <laughs> I I have some guitar music. My my own guitar music. What I want to sample. You make a guitar music, Victor. <laughs> yeah. That that's why. Be, <laughs> that's why I hate. <laughs> oh now the truth comes out yeah <laughs> um i gotta go my prime minister is making a announcement in like 15 minutes so maybe i'll be allowed out my house uh-oh unlikely oh. but we can hide. is everybody else ready for that put me out my house i'm not yeah like, fuck off <laughs> No, I, I, think, I have had an alcoholic beverage this weekend, I think you'll find. Oh, sounds like a good idea. I haven't drunk a thing. Right, yeah, I'm going to dip. See ya. Dip. Bye. Bye. I might not be far behind because i got to make myself some lunch before I waste away. Yeah, I uh, right now I'm going on... Uh, two plantains well not actually two tostones i don't know how many plantains went into those tostones um and a cupcake and this coffee that's that's been my lunch so far <laughs> we went we, we like went by the cat cafe on the way back from costco and um the uh it's like at this, you know, it's like you can't go into the cat cafe, so it's like it's not oh, really. It's, it's just the, it's just the cafe now, you know. It's like <laughs> it's like a coffee shop, like any other coffee shop at this point. But um, but uh, you know, we uh, wanted to support them, so and they give you a little like they have um. I, I ate it, so I can't show it to you. But they have this these like I don't know if it's fondant, but some sort of like sugar hard sugar thing that looks like a cat on top of the cupcake so um so it's a cat cafe in that respect still <laughs> okay but, uh, yeah cool. um but um yeah we uh we're at maximum occupancy about of cats so um that's uh that's our situation <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's where I got this coffee. It was pretty. It was pretty good. All right, I think I'm gonna drop two. All right, Hi, Doug, Sam, Hi. Greg. Yeah, sweet. Later. See you next week, Ben. Oh uh, yeah. And I, yeah, I was gonna say I should still be host, so we should be. So, um, mostly for, well, Greg and Sam both, um, I guess, because you guys have me here. So, Ben is the guy who um, is creating the um, the Zoom stuff, but then he can make me presenter, and then um, we can keep on going. Uh, and actually, um, I get I could probably make other people presenters. I don't know how that works. That's uh. I can mute people and unmute people. I, oh yeah, okay, I can make people host if I want. Um, and I can allow people to record if I want. So 
this is this is you know the sausage making part of making this happen <laughs> um but uh yeah so um so i we talked a little bit greg about oh yeah i asked you about cc mixer so um i haven't really used cc mixer that that much um i don't really know what they're they're doing that much i know that uh mike was trying to help um cc mixer with their website and stuff for a little bit um but i don't know where all where all that has uh has gone um but um i have about every once in a while but that's pretty much it yeah hey you just released something on friday didn't you yeah yeah you want to talk about that yeah i guess you could um it's called box lunch um i would like to see these that i put out where i, I mix like samples with um with porn and I, I want to do that again and i it just went all left i've been watching like a lot of wrestling so i've been making like wrestling obscure wrestling interest themes that's pretty much what that album is and um, i'm making sorry are you making your covers yourself? Album mm-hmm. covers. Do you make in your album covers yourself? Uh, I used to not not anymore. Like all the block science stuff, that's um Mike. Oh. I just give mm. it to him nowadays, and I, I just, just give him like a direction, and then he just goes away with it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I just noticed that um the uh, the recent releases section on the Block Sonic homepage stopped i don't know if mike does this manually or what but it doesn't have anything more recent than the the das mister um release so i'm gonna i'm gonna send a message to mike because i mean there's been several a handful since the um since the um i mean both of you guys have released oh actually no um you haven't released anything on black sonic picture since that came out but um but uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know when that was, but it was it was a few weeks ago, maybe months. Time all runs together now. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Jeez. So uh, Sam, you um, you know the net label scene um, pretty well. Um, have you seen any good uses of uh, of samples? I have. Um, my favorite artist Massimo Roberti. Um, he released a, an album a few years ago. Um, I'll drop the link. Um, but there's one track called Magnificent Desolation and he uses a lot of like audio samples from like I think it's Neil Armstrong Leaning on the Moon or something. Um, it's pretty awesome how he put it all together in the song. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've probably, besides my sumo, I've probably found a lot of artists that use samples and like, for instance, speed kicks and stuff. And it's just pretty awesome how they can I don't know, add musical instruments with a sound recording of something. Put it all together. Yeah, that's one thing we haven't really talked about is like um, spoken word. I mean, I think a lot of the, I mean, the, the like copyright stuff that we've talked about still applies. But I mean, like artistically, that's like a much different you see you see that a lot on things that are uh, otherwise like tagged as instrumental or like things that don't have singing I feel like I mean you see it other places too but I feel like there's a fair amount of like you know here's an old movie in the scene or whatever um I don't know um this is uh not really anything to do with music but I was looking at this public domain review thing I just saw these uh, plague um, plague doctor costumes. <laughs> I thought that was apropos. Um, I kind of I want a plague mask. Uh, pretty sweet. Um, 
but I was looking on this public domain review um, because I think they have like an audio collection or they used to. Okay, here we go. So just so um, rather than just a link to the homepage and having to fill around, people can, um, you know, uh, I guess for Victor and Greg and anybody else who, uh, you know, might be watching, like, you know, I'm not going to say that you completely get away from the copyright issues with the public domain stuff um, because it, it kind of depends on like how public domain it is, you know, like um, and like what country you're in, like the public domain rules are a little bit different. Like, um, like uh, Spain, I think has a longer term in the EU than the rest. And then there's some weird stuff like in the Netherlands, the diary of Anne Frank is um, like, didn't go into the public domain. It has special like copyright status. Um, and I want to say in France, there's some country that um, extended copyright for anybody that died in World War One or World War II. Um, and so like, you know, let's just say it's France. Um, I, I was listening to this yesterday, so I wish I actually remember it. I think it was France, but, um, and this was all discussed on White Market Podcast. Um, so if anybody wants to like fact check me on this, you can, you can listen to the, I don't know if it was released on January 1st, but at the public domain episode for 2020, um, on the white market podcast, which is a creative commons, um, music podcast. Um, but, um, yeah, so I think it's 70 years after death normally that the stuff goes into public domain, but then it was extended for like 30 years for authors that died in world war one and world war two. So it's like, you know, yeah. like the public domain review, um, they do some diligence around the stuff. So I would say that um, it's reasonably safe to use anything there. Um, but, you know, if you see something that, um, you know, has one of these, you know, like they have some stuff on here from 1937, for sure, 100% in the U.S., not everything before 1937 was in um, the public domain. So, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so uh, you, you've I, had a very bad job of copyright in, in the U.S. It's just terrible. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think everywhere has their own little yeah. Quantities. <laughs> um, but because we waited so long to uh, join the Berne Convention, um, we were we were like out of step with like the rest of the world for a really long time. And then even when we did finally do Berne. Um, in the 80s and the late 80s, we didn't really do it in full. And there was a big Supreme Court case, I think in 2010, um, that uh, that basically was like, no, you can't, you can't like say you're doing burn and not do it. <laughs> um, right. and, and so like, yeah, it's all like artists that are outside of the U.S. have like more protection than artists within the U.S., because that's what the Berne Convention says, that foreign artists have to have at least as much protection as those in the U.S. And so, um, so yeah, we were like, okay, for people that are foreign authors, we'll give them full Berne status, but not people within the U.S. But that doesn't really apply to you guys. Um, I mean, because like the, the people we're talking about were like making music in like the 50s, maybe 60s. Um, you know, but anybody like making music after that, like, you know, everything is pretty much the same. Um, so, you know, the stuff, the stuff for live authors is, um, you know, death is what makes things interesting in copyright land. Well, it's not the only thing, but it's a big part. But it's pretty easy to enforce your rights once you're, uh, if you're alive, <laughs> it's a lot harder yeah. once you're dead. Um, so that's, Especially when the copyrights don't last forever. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, and that's one thing too. It's like in other countries, like these moral rights do, um, they do last forever. Um, but we don't have that in, um, in the US. Um, that's why like in, in France and stuff, you can't just like declare stuff into the public domain because like they don't really have a public domain in the same way that the US does. Um, so that's why uh, I mentioned earlier, like the Creative Commons licenses. There's also this thing um, the Creative Commons has, it's a public domain mark, um, or sometimes it's called CC0. And it's not strictly speaking a license, but like you have to have a sort of legal document that says what your intentions are um, in specifically for countries that um, don't have like a public domain in the same way that we do in the US. It's a little bit easier to say, this is the public because domain. And, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't know um, what, what the uh the public domain situation is in uh in kazakhstan but um yeah again uh sam i, I mentioned free sound and um and cc mixter and public domain review i don't know were there any other sites like that um that you're aware of that i mean i would think you might be just, um, I think they're kind of similar to the net label scene a little bit. I haven't actually looked at each specific um, sampling website. I just know that it seems that, I don't know. I guess the main thing is like, if whenever like a new like drum and bass release album comes out um, on a net label, is there, it's always filled with a bunch of samples that like sound like they're from the 20s. And it's just kind of funny. Um, but I guess um, you know, I guess a lot of these artists You have to be careful because we're in the twenties again. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, a lot of stuff in the US from the twenties is in the public domain. Uh, I don't remember the year off the top of my head, but um like um that should be a pretty easy thing to look up. So that, that would certainly make those samples easier to use. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm looking this up. All right, uh, 1924. So All Works first published or released in 1924 or, or, or I can't talk, or earlier have lost their copyright protection in the US. So, um, so yeah, the early 20s ripe for, uh, for the sampling. At one point, that's what I used to do, you know, I used to try and look up all their samples from the 20s. I got like, 78 RPM records around here somewhere. Eh, sorry. Yeah. Not a lot of variety, honestly. Yeah, and I mean, it's like the recordings are probably not, like, you probably get a lot of, like, you know, the static from the, you know, the phonograph from the vinyl, a lot of that. Um, that the, and also it's just, it's all pretty much the same song in the 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of like ragtime and. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Um, that, that was it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, the thing is, you got to think about it is like, you know, think about how much more it would have cost to do like a full orchestra recording of stuff. Definitely. Because yeah. you got so many more people. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, but. I think, um, I mean, there, there's stuff out there. I mean, I wish people like Creative Commons musicians were better about um, providing stems. Um, I know that that's something we've tried to do a little bit on Black Sonic. Um, I think Mike just relaunched the, uh, the remix page. Um, but Me and him got some comments too. What was that? Me and Mike got some comments as well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Remix.blacksonic.com. Right now we just have the, um, 
the Donkey Sun, um, which I don't even know. I don't like. I don't even remember like a full release from them on Block Sonic. Um, I don't think it's out yet. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I'm tr- um, I'm trying to do one of the remixes right now. Ah, okay. So we didn't have the original, but we're gonna release the um, the remix. Is that that's what you're saying? That's I, 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 actually, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. So this is the only one that we have. We did have. Um, I know Lorenzo's music was on the old um, remix page. Um, uh, I should download some of those stems as well. I don't know where I put them. The the Lorenzo mu- music one. Yeah. Yeah. We just couldn't get, like, we just didn't have enough people submitting anything to, um, you know, to, to put something out with that. But, um, and I can tell you, I was just, I was fucking busy. I so yeah. Fucking busy. Yeah. I mean, that's, I was like, oh, no, I don't have no time. I didn't have time to do some I was doing. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if you ended up wanting to do some of that still, you know, and just throw it on one of yours, I mean, I'm sure that Tom would be, you know, he'd be, he's always happy to see people using, using the, the Lorenzo's music stuff. So, I mean, just because we took down the page doesn't mean you can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have it on my hard drive. So I just got to yeah. get some time with all this COVID shit and me working and all. Yeah. I have enough time. I'm just tired. Fair enough. Yeah. Yes. Have you been on um, on Potsy's, uh either one of you guys on uh, on his podcast yet? Yeah, I have. Okay, I don't remember that, but um, I thought I had listened to all of them, but maybe I haven't. Yeah, that was a shoot. last year, early last year. <laughs> maybe I just maybe, maybe even that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just been so long that I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. <sighs> Um, but oh, yeah, I can't remember the release was for too. It was for a release I did. I can't remember which one. Ah, they just they just dropped a new one. I think on Friday. Yeah, with my album. Well, not, yeah, I mean the same day, but uh, yeah, yeah did they yeah, yeah. Did, did he play some stuff off of there? I don't think so. Okay, yeah, I um I listened to it, but like again, I don't remember all the tracks that that he ended up playing. I uh, he I think he played one of your um. You did a remix of one of C-Doc's um, things like years ago, and oh, I, yeah, think, yeah, yeah, I think that yeah. I think that was on the podcast. Um, <laughs> and he said something like, uh, "There must not have been something a lot going on in Block Sonic in 2016 or something." I was like, "People just remix stuff." For, I thought it was a weird thing to say. <laughs> I, I think that might have been it because I didn't even even plan to even make that remix. It was just I was bored and that's. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, maybe he knows the backstory that I don't know, but I, I just thought it was a weird thing to, to say. I was like, I don't know if that's like, you know, necessarily. Uh, I was like, I remember 2016. I feel like there was stuff going. Maybe it wasn't 2016, but, um, you know, I just, I just thought it was a funny thing to kind of say. But, um, mm. but yeah, um, I listened to that. I wrote out the Stillwater yesterday, and uh, which probably none of you guys know where it's at but if you want to find out where Stillwater is type it into google um and uh i was, I was listening to that on the way out there um so i think i am probably hitting close to the end of my uh my cupcake and coffee i'm probably gonna crash here pretty soon um did uh I don't, I don't have anything specific that I want to talk about with uh, samples or sampling, but I want to give anybody um, the opportunity to say anything else that they uh, would like to, or if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to, to try to answer them. I'm good. I have nothing to say. Sam, <laughs> Victor. So next week's topic is finding the music for real. That's the plan. Yeah. So I've got, I've still got my, um, I've got a little notepad plus plus. Well, I guess it's just a text file that I, uh, that I created with a bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk about for, um, for that day. What, what is actually new music? New music. It's for me or is new, new. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think we can talk about both. Um, so I think the, the main idea is finding music that is new to you. So it could be, you know, it could have be, been released in the, you know, the 1920s. Maybe you're looking for some ragtime. <laughs> How do you find that ragtime? Um, but yeah, right. I think that, um, I think that actually new releases is, I mean, that's a part of it, you know? Um, so yeah, all, all of those things, um, that we'll, we'll talk about next week. And then, um, what we're going to do after, or I guess kind of starting this week is I've been announcing the topics ahead of time, um, just in case people watch this and, and so they could be like, Oh, that's an interesting topic. I want to be involved. But uh, I started the Facebook group. So if somebody is watching this and doesn't know, um, just leave a comment in the, you know, on the YouTube or um, wherever I end up posting this, you know, probably will be just like Facebook and, um, and the Slack channel. Um, it just ask me, um, you know, for the link and I'll make sure that like you get, you get onto the Facebook group. Um, although I guess if you're on the Facebook group or in the Slack, then you don't need to ask me. So, so YouTube is the place to ask me, or if you just know how to get in contact with me, um, I can, I can hook you up with the link to the, to the quarantine chat. Uh, and also for like anybody watching, um, who's like in the group, but wasn't able to attend today. And for those of you that are here, uh, feel free to invite your friends to that Facebook group. Um, I think as long as you're friends with me on Facebook, you have, you can approve people, I think is the way that works. Um, but, um, if not, let me know that you invited a friend and then I can approve them because I'm not going to, I'm not going to approve like random ass people that I don't know who they are. Um, right. because that's just a recipe for spam. <laughs> um, and what, I invited two, two friends, but I don't know if they're seen. Please you don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I haven't seen, um, anybody, uh, request membership other than, um, this random dude, um, I mean, he's random to me. Um, so somebody else may have uh, have invited him, but he's uh, I think he's Indian, um, which uh, I don't know. I'm kind of suspicious. Uh, well, he says he's in Ohio, but uh, I can't see much of the profile. There wasn't a whole lot about um, music. I kind of feel like he's a spammer, but. Um, mm. But Aditya Sahi, aka Chiku, I probably butchered all that. But if you're watching this, just send me a message and say, dude, I am not a spammer. I really want to be a part of this. Because, uh, uh, yeah, I kind of looked at your profile. Not very much as uh, public. So I was kind of like, not really also, feeling that. Have you noticed that your YouTube videos have been getting a lot of spam comments as well? I ha I think they auto like. There's always somebody that says, "Want to be friends" or something like that. Oh like, yeah, <laughs> um, I, yeah. I haven't. It's weird. I don't really get um, notifications. I'm seeing about that on, the, the on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, really? I figured they would. Um, they wouldn't like send me. I mean, maybe they're like sort of like not fully like spamming it, but like not sending me messages about the comments because um, I feel like I should be getting messages about the comments and um, I'm not. Um, oh yeah, I saw, th there's a loved it on that one. Um, the thing is, it's like these spammers are pretty bad because it's like, if you're going to be a spammer, at least like drop a link. Like this comment is loved it. Like, what is, I mean, is the idea that somebody's going to click on your profile and then go to whatever your spam thing is on there? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they really did love it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. So, um, you know, maybe they're, they're like trying to build their profile so later they can, they, they'll seem like less spamming. I don't know. But um, I did, I did see that. One. I think I, like, I've seen like two comments, but I haven't seen more than that. So, um yeah, I don't know. Uh, spam is a, it's a yeah, funny lot, beast. Lot of, a lot of them on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. The other, the other thing is, is like, I don't want like 
30 people to show up because like then nobody's going to be able to talk, you know? Right. Um, so it's like, if you, if you just want to sit and listen, then like just watch the recording, you know, you don't need to show up for that. Um, you know, I mean, unless we have a week where the recording goes bad or something, but, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but anyway, yeah. So next week we're going to talk about finding music and I, I think I got sidetracked about what I was saying with that. So I've been announcing them beforehand and I'm not doing that anymore. We're going to do the vote the week of, um, because there's no need to announce because people can just find out in the, the pseudo public group. You know, um, that, that's the whole point of the, of the, the group that I can approve anybody to go to. I didn't want to just like add random people to the judges group if they're not judges. So, um, but, uh, all of you guys are, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see like, uh, like Ty last week, like he's not a judge. So, I mean, that was good for him to come. That was cool last week. Uh, I enjoyed that conversation. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. Um, and you know, um maybe we'll have enough people to break it into two um i know that like a couple of, well there's one guy he's in estonia that i work with that he's just like this time doesn't work because it's too late for him um and so i i would like to try to get um enough but it, it's also kind of like um there's nothing like special about this like uh, other than like I'm trying to record it and put it online, but it's like, if you want to talk to people about music, just like fire up a, a zoom call, <laughs> invite your friends. So, um, you know, uh, if this time doesn't work for you, just, you know, find some friends. <laughs> uh, all right guys. Um, well, yeah, same time. Um, next week, I uh, hope to see you all here and, um, you know, we've got the Facebook group too, if we want to chat in between then and now. Cool. Cool. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Have a good week, everybody. You too, guys. Bye.